In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hello, today we are proceeding to reading the second chapter of the Epistle to Colossians by St. Paul. Uh, today is Friday, and uh, uh, the next pericope uh, consists of uh, three parts. Uh, first of all, in verses uh, 1 through 3 of chapter 2, uh, Holy Apostle exp uh, manifests his care about uh, Colossians and their neighbors. In the second part, he indicates, uh, he speaks about his, uh, their good order in faith and life, although they have some uh, dangers from uh, persuasive uh, false teachers. And in the third part, uh, he encouraged them to be firm and do not ch change what they have received. So let us uh, read verse by verse. Uh, for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Uh, here, uh, Holy Apostle encouraged them. Uh, he uh, manifests his love to Colossians. He says that he has a great conflict. He, uh, his heart uh, is disturbed about what is happening with them. And the next verse says that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the fullness assurance, of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Here he says uh, about them, who are they? According to St. Theophanes, uh, this uh, uh, there means you that, you, that your hearts may be encouraged by knit together in love. Here he encouraged them to be knit together in love and um, Uh, and uh, thus uh, and be encouraged to be comforted uh, in uh, according to another translation of course it doesn't mean that there is uh, uh, some problem uh, some danger uh, or grief it means that there is a possibility of problem if they uh, listen to the words of false teachers who want them to decline from uh, Christ. And of course, uh, it doesn't mean that they have no love, uh, but he says that there is a um, possibility of uh, uh, various thinking, which uh, can endanger their uh, mutual love and love uh, with uh, other Christians. So what is this, uh, the mystery of faith? What is the, the mystery of God the Father and Christ? Uh, we, last time we have already uh, spoken about the mystery of salvation in Christ Jesus or how Gentiles who were far and distant from God received opportunity to come to God the Father through Christ, the only path to Him. If they uh, 
change this thinking, uh, they will uh, fall away from the hope in Christ, fall away from these riches uh, of the full assurance of understanding. And uh, in uh, Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So uh, one shouldn't look uh, for and hear for human teachings. If they already received Christ and believed in Him, these words that uh, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ mean that He is uh, God Himself and uh, all that we need is in Him. The words that in Him these treasures are hidden means that there are no other places where we can uh, take uh, these treasures of knowledge, where we can acquire them. Of course, uh, many people of this world, they do not understand uh, uh, they cannot uh, find astrology in the Gospel and uh, geometry in the epistles of apostles. They cannot find arithmetic and music in prophets. Uh, as uh, Ambrosius, uh, the ancient interpreter, puts it. Uh, people of this world do not understand why do not we uh, persecute this, uh, why do not we follow these uh, subjects as Christians. The point of the uh, Saint Paul of Saint Paul here is that uh, even if you do not know uh, something of this of the world, but you know Christ. You know everything, and on the contrary, sometimes things, subjects of this world are uh, useless and can be harmful because uh, make people forget to take care of their salvation. Uh, now we read the fourth verse. Now this I say lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So, after expressing of uh, kind wishes, St. Paul uh, speaks about warnings. If there is all there is, uh, the wisdom and knowledge are in Christ, there will be no need in uh, worldly wisdom. So the, co the logical consequence of this is uh, not to listen to uh, false teachings. And uh, at the same time, he expresses his joy uh, that uh, they have good order and steadfastness of faith in Christ. This is a very good praise from Apostle. I think uh, uh, every Christian wishes to receive this pra praise from God on the Last Judgment and from uh, Apostles who will judge the world. He doesn't say that they, have, uh, they stand in faith, but he underlines that he, they have steadfastness of faith in Christ 
and they have good order. He speaks them uh, as with good soldiers. So uh, he uh, writes them, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. He reminds them uh, how they received Christ Jesus the Lord. It doesn't mean only that they believed uh, the preaching, that uh, there is uh, salvation only in him, but they received holy baptism and they Endow, were, were dressed in Christ and uh, uh, this uh, what he means by receiving Christ Jesus Christ uh, Christ uh, the Lord because uh, not only faith but also holy baptism and repentance is needed uh, to be saved and uh, he, in the last verse of this pericope, St. Paul compares uh, Colossians with a tree to be uh, rooted uh, in Christ. And he compares with the building, to be built up in him. And he encourages them to... Uh, suck uh, gracious uh, waters from uh, Christ and uh, as a tree is rooted and so grow in faith and he encourages them by these words to grow uh, higher and higher to continue build, being built to achieve his measures. Here I want to like, would like to uh, draw your attention to verse 5. Uh, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. Uh, here, Holy Apostle wants them uh, to sober up their mind of his through his authority of apostolic power. He says, I am um, with you in spirit. Uh, if uh, he says, by this verse, he says, if I were present with you personally, would you allow yourself to be um, Uh, deceived with persuasive words, to be attracted by them? Of course not. So that is why bear in mind that I am with you and you will not be deceived. And this bearing in mind is not just uh, a dream, but uh, this is truth. Although He's, he writes, I'm distant from you in flesh, but I know the deceivers. And he, uh, in such a way, he puts himself between them, the deceivers, and Colossians, in order that Colossians will um, be afraid, uh, will fear, uh, fear him as if he would be with them. Uh, there is some passage in uh, the Old Testament in fourth book of uh, Kings or uh, second book of Kings according to Western numeration when uh, pro Saint Prophet, Holy Prophet Elisha saw like his servant he is he uh, 
followed Naaman of Syria in order to receive from him a present through the seed. And uh, uh, he reproved his uh, servant. If we think of this mm, and uh, compare power of prophets and power of apostles, uh, we, can, we can come to conclusion that it is very important uh, for us to um, keep in mind, bear in mind that apostles are with us uh, in order not to be distracted to various uh, teachings and persuasive words. During the worship service uh, in the Orthodox Church, we often address to the bishop, the Vladika, uh, to bless. And uh, it is interesting that he is not necessarily present in the sanctuary uh, or in the church, but he uh, addressed to him as if he was present. Uh, on our service and uh, uh, here uh, we just repeat what uh, Saint Paul advises to Colossians to bear in mind uh, the presence of him with them but uh, of course we today uh, bear in mind this and bear in mind that he's uh, rightfully ordained, uh, regularly ordained, and uh, uh, Orthodox uh, um, successors, bishops, are uh, with us uh, through their their spirit, and uh, this is very profitable for us in order to remain uh, in uh, the right teaching of apostles uh, to them uh, to whom was entrusted the only uh, saving teaching, the only uh, saving good news, the uh, only saving mysteries about salvation of Gentiles in Jesus Christ. And alone this news makes us wise and enough, uh, wiser than any uh, uh, wise men of this world, uh, because uh, this actually the purpose of the world to exist, that uh, people who decided to love God uh, even to their death, uh, they can uh, come and be saved, they come, come to God and be with Him eternally in His Church and uh, be on His throne with Him. Um, and. Uh, be in the in the spirit of Christ, to be in the uh, Holy Spirit, and uh, even speaking already speaking of this, of uh, of His cross, of His uh, coming and resurrection and ascension. Even uh, reminding of this makes. Uh, our heart uh, tremble in awe towards our Creator and Savior. Uh, tomorrow, uh, on Saturday, according to Church calendar, there is no reading in Colossians, but we will take uh, another pericope of uh, Colossians that should be read on Saturday, one of the winter Saturdays.
mm. in order to learn to study all the epistle in a fortnight. Mm. 